Hey, my name is Bruce Gilson, and I want to welcome you to another episode of our Knowledge Basics. Today, we're talking coax. Hey, Bruce, thanks a lot. You taught me how to make an SDI cable, but my SDI cable doesn't work. All right, so there's a, a ton of reasons why SDI may or may not work, okay? And you could throw your SDI into a real simple cable tester. You could even throw it into a complicated cable tester and it still would might pass on the tester, but it's not passing video for you. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't pass video, what good is it? All right, this is where you gotta make sure you're using the right cable type for what you're doing. Have you heard the term 3G, 6G, 12G? I mean, we're gonna have more than 12G pretty soon, but that is getting into how much data is the cable rated at carrying over a specific distance. 3G means it can carry three gigs of information 6G is six gigs of information, 12G, I think you're getting the idea, it's 12 gigs of information. And uh, the video signal that you're sending down your cable determines how large that video package is. So if you used 3G cable, which that's not what I have in my hand, but let's say that you use 3G cable and then you were trying to pass 4K video Guess what? 3G doesn't carry 4K. 3G maxes out at 1080p. So that could be a reason why your SDI cable didn't work. Or you used 6G cable and you're trying to pass 4K 60. 4K is the size, 60 is the frames. And guess what? 12G doesn't carry six, wait, at the 12, 6G doesn't carry 4K 60, that's what I meant to say. Or you use 6G cable and you're actually pushing a format that it can support, but you're sending it over a crazy long distance. Well, that means that there's too much resistance in the line and your 6G cable's not gonna make it even though it's rated for that size. So there's a lot of things you gotta pay attention to, not just the connectors and not just the tools and not just the right type of cable and the diameter. You also gotta make sure that you're using a cable that's gonna support the amount of data that you're gonna push through it over the distance that you're gonna push it through it. And for those things, I really recommend you go to the manufacturer, you look up the data, uh, you know, the spec sheets of the specific cable that you have and uh, understand what your case usage is and what are you gonna be using that cable for and why do you need it and how are you gonna push it? Now wait, there's more. Okay, so that's all about video. What about antenna cable? We use coax for antenna all the time. Antenna, what I'm talking about there, is primarily for uh, audio wireless microphone units. They're gonna have an antenna, they're gonna have a coax cable connected to that antenna, and they're gonna be picking up the wireless signal. Well, that's when we get into ohm ratings, and antenna cable is recommended at 50 ohms, video is recommended at 75 ohms. So once again, you just got even more confused, and you're like, oh my gosh, I thought we were, well, Use the right cable for the right purpose. And I think that's the main takeaway here. Understand what your cable is. Understand what the rating is. Understand that it's got the right connectors and understand that it's gonna do what you want it to do once you get it all connected. Because at the end of the day, you could do everything right as an installer, but if you've got the wrong cable installed, it's still not gonna work. Hope that helps you out. Can't wait to see you next time. And if you're still awake, well, now you can go to sleep.